In this video, you're gonna learn a couple really easy tips to make awesome character animations, even if you're using a sprite sheet or an art pack for a game jam that has no animations and you're not a very good artist like me. Let's get started. This video is made in proud partnership with the Go Godot Jam. Make sure to check it out if you haven't, the link to that will be in the description below, and to subscribe and take a look at all the other great creators that have partnered with this jam. And make sure to go Godot. In this video, we're going to be using Kenny's 1-bit pack and specifically the download included in that file that's the monochrome transparent pack.png. I'll have the link to that in the description below so you can get in and follow along. The first thing we're gonna do is learn how to use rotation and transformation to give nice animations to static sprites, even if they don't have animations built into them. So in order to do that, I'm gonna create a new sprite called a character here, you can call whatever. And then for the texture, I'm gonna drag in our monochrome transparent packed folder or file here into the textures, and then I'm gonna to come to region and hit enable. This will let us select a specific texture region to use for our sprite. For our character and you'll notice it's blank right now so you have to come down to texture region down here which will be uh, which will appear now that we've enabled texture region i'm going to zoom in a lot because this is a pretty big sprite sheet you want to have snap mode we'll go to grid snap and we're going to make it pretty small i'll probably do two pixels which is going to seem tiny but this will give us just a better um, interface and i'll make this bigger and so we're going to select the player character in order to do that i'm just going to select this basic guy up here and if you're like me and forgot, you'll wanna make sure that when you import this, that you import the monochrome transparent file as a pixel art. So if I go into import up here, hit preset, 2D pixel, and re-import. This will get rid of the filter and make it pixel perfect upon import. And now you'll see that we can get this sprite perfectly. And if I move this down, all of a sudden, even though we have a single sprite sheet, we've got our character sprite here. Okay, and now that we have our character sprite, we wanna add an animation to it. And I'm just gonna add an animation player into our scene tree here. Normally I would have this nicely structured where our animation player and you know we wouldn't just have a sprite as the base, we'd have a kinematic body or something like that, but this is totally fine. We're gonna create a new animation called walk. And now we're gonna start adding some keys to it. So now that we have our character here, make sure your character is selected and select the animation tab down below. And then come up here to the top bro up here and you'll see these two little dots, location, rotation, and there's also a scale one. You wanna make sure that location and rotation are selected, but not the scale, because we wanna add keyframes for our character, the sprite's location or position and rotation, but not for the scale. And what we're gonna do is start our animation at the beginning. So we'll keep it at one second for now and we can change later. Make sure your snap is at 0.1 seconds and you'll probably wanna zoom in a little bit so you can see all the 0.1 second increments. So start your animation right at the beginning and then come up to this key button up here. This is gonna add keyframes for these selected, uh, selected properties up here, which are only location rotation. So hit add key. And now we'll have a starting position where the player starts with a position rotation of default at zero, zero. We're also gonna do this for the end of the animation. So I'll select all the way to the end. We'll add these same keys. And then halfway through the animation, we'll do the same thing. So the player is gonna tilt to the right and then back to the middle and then tilt to the left and then back to the middle. And that will be the whole animation. And it'll be a repeating cycle that we'll just play whenever the player is moving. So now let's start by adding some keys here. First, I'm gonna move our animation uh, timer. We're gonna to go to the 0.2. Technically, it should be 0.25, so we can change our snap down here to be 0.05. So I can go to 0.25 right now. So this is halfway in between the middle. It's a quarter into our animation. And now that our character is selected, I'm gonna start doing some things here. First, I'm gonna hit W so I can move our character left, and then I'm gonna move our character left a little bit. And then I'm gonna hit E, which is the rotation button. You can also select these up here. And I'm gonna tilt our character to the left. Now, because we're tilting our character to the left and its legs are going down, we'll also need to move it up a little bit. And what I can do is now that I have these, if I hit this key button, it'll now add keyframes for the current values of position and rotation. And if I do this, we'll now have a keyframe where we need it. And we can adjust as needed. So if we play this, we'll see if it needs to be adjusted. But that looks pretty good for now. So I think what we can do is kind of copy that onto the right side. So we did our left side at 0.25, now we can go to our right at 0.75 and just add keyframes here. And notice I won't make this on my own manually, I'm actually just gonna duplicate exactly what we do for the left side. So when we have these numbers for our position, I'm just gonna copy them and make them not negative for the X. So I'll grab that and make this here and then get rid of the negative. And our Y is gonna be the same thing because we do want the Y to also be negative this would be a lot easier if I did just whole numbers rather than integer or rather than decimals, but that's totally fine. And we'll do the same with our rotation degrees. We'll just bump that up to negative 20 
And so for this one, we'll rotate it 20. And now if I run our animation and set it to loop, you'll see that we have a walk animation. And it's kind of slow, but all of a sudden you see we've taken this static sprite and made it dynamic. It's got a walk animation where it tilts back and forth and it looks like it's kind of walking. For a static sprite that you got off the internet and just a couple minutes of work, this is a really nice way to add some life to your game and to your art without having to actually alter the pixels at all. Now we're going to create a hit animation for our character so we can have some nice hit effects. So if you've got a character and an NPC that get hit by an attack, you can show that they've taken damage and give the player some nice feedback. So the first way that we're going to do that is by adding our keyframes. Now we're going to keep location and rotation selected, but we're also going to select scale for this one. So make sure you select the little scale button up here and then hit the keyframes. And then we're going to start an animation with just the default for all of these. And we're actually going to make this animation be 0.2 seconds. It's going to be very quick, just a quick little flash and scale to give some feedback to our player. And we're also going to change our snap to be 0.05. And so what we're going to do is come to one second into our or 0.1 second into our animation, and we're actually going to add a scale change. So if I select our character sprite up here and come down to our transform, I'm going to change the scale to be 0.8 in the X because we want it to shrink a little bit in the X but then to expand in the Y, so 1.2. And what this is going to do is give it a nice dynamic effect. And now that I've got this, I'm going to hit the keyframe button here to lock that in. And what I'm going to do is also copy our default keys. So just select all three keys that are at the zero position and then duplicate them at the 0.15 position here. So now if I play this, you'll see that when we get hit, it's just a quick squish. Now this doesn't really look like anything really that cool on its own, but now if we start combining it with a little bit of rotation, we'll see that it's actually pretty dynamic. So for our rotation degrees here, at our 0.1 keyframe, so when we've got our action going on, let's actually add just a tiny bit of rotation, and I'm gonna make this negative five. And what this is gonna do is really offset the character just enough to make it look like it got hit with some impact, and later on, you can adjust this not by hard coding values into your animation player. You can use tweens or dynamic animations to make this a little bit more dynamic than just hard coding negative five degrees. But for now, this is a really fast and easy way to get some feedback for the player. So now if we run this, you'll see that that rotation just adds a little bit extra of a hit and it kind of offsets the vertical scaling up so it doesn't look like the player is actually looking weird or becoming a stick or something. Now. This is a really nice just quick hit effect, but there's something more we can do. One, about, one of the nice things about using a monochrome or a white texture pack is that it's really easy to change the colors within Godot. So if I select our character and we go to its modulate property and change it to be, let's say, a mint green or something. If we've got this color here as a default, we can actually adjust our color within the animation player. So if I add a track here, hit property and select our character, and then come and find our modulate properly. Now we can actually adjust the player's color. So I'll set a default key, which will just be whatever color the player is at the beginning and end of our animation. Our animation is really 0.15 seconds, so I can just change that to be our total length. And then at 0.1 seconds, I'm gonna insert a new keyframe and make this white. So it's gonna look like when the player gets hit, there's a flash. And now if we play this, you can really see that all of a sudden, it looks like the player's getting hit by something. There's some feedback, there's the squish, the scaling, and there's the flash. And all of a sudden, just like that, you've added some life and a really nice dynamic hit animation to an otherwise static sprite. All right, so there's one other thing I wanna show you that's really helpful for making good effects in art in a game jam, and that's actually breaking up the art pack sprites into smaller sprites. So this whole time we've been using this single player sprite here and adding animations to it, but we could actually make it a lot more dynamic by turning it into a cutout animation. And the way we do that is by actually splitting up the different parts of the sprite. So separating out each arm and the legs and the head, for example, as different sprites that you can move individually rather than just having to move the entire character on its own. Toward the end, I've made a new scene tree here. I've kept our character sprite, but actually added a kinematic body 2D as the parent of that sprite. You can make this just a no 2D or whatever you want. It just needs to be a parent. And then we're going to have this character sprite down here. Now what I'm going to do is actually duplicate this sprite a few times. And then this first one, I'm going to rename and call it head. And if we go to our texture region, I'm actually going to zoom in here and we might need to bring our step down to one. And I can't zoom in all the way that I want to, but enough. And I'm going to re-grab this and just grab the head. And we might lose some pixels in the bottom. If I cared more about this, we'd be a bit more precise. But that'll do for now. And then same with this next one. We're going to call it 
body. And what we're going to do here is just grab the body. Just like that. And then for this next one, we can just call this left leg. And then here, actually on this body, I think I got the legs. Let's just bump that up there. And then for left leg, we're just going to grab this little tiny leg here. And for a right leg, I'm just going to command D to duplicate the left leg, call this right leg, and then I'll just come to offset and then flip H. Doing flip H in our case isn't necessary because it's just a rectangle, but if you had different sprites, then using flip H could flip it around for you without having to use a different sprite. So now we can start dragging things into place. We'll drag our head up here. Kind of looks a little weird, but we'll just do that. We'll have our body right where it is, and our left leg we can bring down here and our right leg we can bring over here. Now this looks pretty weird, no doubt, but it's gonna show that we can do modular animations. I'll take both our left and right leg and we'll give this a different color. We'll make this kind of a, somewhat of a lighter skin color or yellow. We'll do the same for the head. So we'll come to our head, go to modulate, and also make this a lighter yellow. And then for the body, we will make this whatever color you want. We can make this a red. And now we can see these different parts, amazing. So all of a sudden we've taken this really simple sprite and we've broken it up into different pieces that we can animate individually. And if you're doing this, you're gonna wanna make it look better than mine here. This is a pretty awful attempt, but just to show you that it's easy to do. Now what we can do is actually add a new walk animation here that's gonna be a little bit more dynamic than our previous one because we can animate the parts individually. So let's keep our walk animation at one second for now and we're gonna go through each piece individually. So let's start with our head. Now as we walk, we probably want our head to bobble left and right just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is select our animation, a uh, little section down at the bottom after we have our head selected and then I'm going to add, when, we're gonna get rid of the scale key here, so make sure you deselect scale. And so at the beginning of our animation, I'm going to add keyframes for our location and rotation of our head. And then when we go about 0.1 into it, I'm going to slightly rotate our head backwards and I'm gonna move it just a little bit to the, up and to the left and I will keyframe that in. And then I'm going to redo. And then so I'm gonna bring our rotation back to zero and then get the same position. Actually, we can just copy these keyframes here and then duplicate them at the beginning. And so now our head is just doing a little bit of bobbing. And then we can, again, just take these and then duplicate them at our point three mark here, except flip them around. Position is just gonna get rid of the negative on our X and then our rotation degrees are just gonna be five degrees forward. And so now as we're walking, our head is bobbing just a little bit. And again, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we add a default keyframe at 0.4. So this is gonna be our walk animation. It'll just be 0.4 seconds. Actually, we'll make it 0.8 and we'll drag all these out. So this should be 0.8. Sorry, we'll make our animation time 0.8. I accidentally said stat, keep that at 0.1. Okay, and then we're just gonna space each of these out by 0.2 seconds each. So it'll give us a nice little dynamic animation. Okay, so now that we have our animation set up, we can see we've got a nice little bob on our head. Now we can do pretty much the same thing for our body, but slightly offset it just so that it looks a little bit more alive. Giving a very tiny offset to how your different parts of your animation are moving is gonna make it feel a little bit better. So for example, on our body, we could do much the same thing. We'll just give it a default at the beginning. We'll create new tracks there. And we'll do the same both at our middle and at the end of our animation, so we have those. And then we'll select the point two mark here. And for our body, what we're gonna wanna do is transform it just slightly more. So let's do negative eight, slightly more than our head. And we'll just do rotation for now, maybe. So let's put that in there. We'll keyframe there and move up to 0.6. And then we'll do positive eight and keyframe that. And let's watch this go. Okay, so it's slightly offset because they're moving a little bit differently and that gives it a nice feel. It doesn't look like it's rigid. And now when we do the legs, we're actually gonna get a bit more life into our animation. So let's select our left and right leg. And again, we're gonna add keyframes at the beginning, middle, and end that just match our default positions. And then we're gonna come to the point two. Let's just start with our left leg, or our right leg, because at point two, we're leaning to the left. So we want our left or our right leg to be up a little bit. So let's move this position up just a tiny little bit. And maybe we can rotate this ever so slightly just a couple, maybe negative five degrees, and then we can keyframe that in. 
and then we can do um, this, or we won't make a keyframe at 0.6 for our right leg because it should go back down. And then our left leg at 0.6 will do much the same thing where we will raise it ever so slightly and we'll just rotate it just five degrees in the positive direction and we'll keyframe that. And now if we watch this, you can see that it actually looks like we've got a character that is walking. And of course, this is not the best animation ever. You could have done a much better job than I did, but this makes it a way, way, way more dynamic animation, even than just the bobbling that we did earlier. Either way though, these are some quick tips and tricks to make a really awesome character and make animations for it, even when you're using an art pack, even when they might not come with those by default. So I hope this video has been really helpful and as you think about doing more game jams this summer and going forward that you can use these tips and tricks to make your games really awesome and make the most out of the art packs that you're using. If these videos have been helpful, a like and subscribe to support the channel is always appreciated. If you haven't joined our Discord server already, make sure you do that. Link to that is in the description below. And if you do find my work helpful, supporting me on Buy Me A Coffee helps me continue to make great videos. The link to that is also in the description. Thanks so much for watching everyone. See you in the next video.